Anytime you're hit with a political message or claim, and that's all the time nowadays, it is fair for you to ask, says who? That basic transparency, whose money's talking here? That is the foundation of being an informed voter. Transparency is hard, apparently, at least based on what we're seeing in Denver, like the mailer from Republicans for Jamie Gillis. No such group. Gillis's mayoral campaign was behind it and did not disclose that as required by law. Our Marshall Zellinger caught up with the voter who caught it. Mailers from the Tate campaign and from the Gillis campaign, from Hancock's campaign. Florence Seaburn is a Denver voter who might pay a little more attention than most of us. Every campaign mailer that comes into this house, I look for certain things because I am familiar with, with the requirements. She has filed two complaints on political mail. One of them is for this Republicans for Jamie Gillis mailer. It doesn't say who paid for it, which is required, but the address... <laughs> is the Jamie Gillis for mayor headquarters. We actually have a candidate and campaign information meeting before every single election. That means the Gillis campaign should have known better. In a response to Seaburn's complaint, the campaign called it an oversight. Did you feel like your name was used to mislead the public? Oh, not at all. Former state Republican Party chairman Ryan Call was a prominent name on the Gillis mailer. Most voters aren't necessarily persuaded by what the paid for by disclaimer is on the bottom of a mailer. What's important to them is the substance of that communication. So what's the punishment for leaving out something simple like paid for by? Do you have to send more mail saying, here's who we are? The hearings officer may make a determination that, okay, well, because this is already out the door, we may be having to look at a fine as opposed to resend to however many people in if there's some kind of violation determined. Then there are the texts, like this one I got asking me to vote no on 300, the right to camp in public spaces. Denver Elections tells me I shouldn't have to ask if the texting campaign costs more than $1,000. It is a mass communication. So we believe there should be some level of disclosure. I have found you can have a lot of fun in those text messages. Just say whatever you really want. If you don't want to get those texts, by the way, as we say often, update your voter registration. If your phone number is in there, wipe it out. Once those future campaigns update their database, they should not have your phone number, hopefully. It's kind of tasty to give those texters a, a piece of your mind on the issues when they contact you. Oh yeah, I think a lot. I think a lot of people do that. So what's what's the deal? I mean, is is the Gillis campaign going to get in trouble for this? I mean, they're going to have to cash out of their pocket. Yeah, the fine could be about five hundred dollars. I'm hearing, but they have thirty days to figure this out. And by the time thirty days are up, the election's over, and whatever they're like, whatever, we'll just pay. Or what if they actually yeah. had to mail something out? It'd be too late at that point. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Marshall. Mm -hmm. It's pretty clear. Jamie Gillis has a problem here, and it honestly is not that mailer from Republicans for Jamie Gillis that just turned out to be Gillis's mayoral campaign. I mean, that's the problem under election law, but, but Gillis's problem is larger than that. So she's running to replace Mayor Michael Hancock by promising more ethical government, more accountable government, and more transparent government. This whole thing does not exactly scream ethics, accountability, and transparency. Mayor Hancock's team is surely going to delight in Gillis's stumble. They have aimed more criticism at her than his other challengers. We have not seen their private polling, but you have to assume that if any challenger poses a threat to Hancock, they think that it's Gillis. But while this issue may hurt her, it doesn't make the mayor any less likely to end up in a runoff election. Any voter who decides to move away from Gillis is likely to vote for one of the mayor's other challengers. The test for the mayor and we don't know how much of a test it's going to be, is avoiding that runoff by getting 50% of the vote plus one. If it's a runoff, that's when he could be in real trouble, facing the combined forces of all of his challengers, including all those Republicans for Jamie Gillis.